What is going on beautiful people? I am Lee Hammock, the diagnosed self-aware narcissist known as mental illness and welcome to another episode of A Narcissist Explains. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about does therapy actually work on a narcissist? Does therapy stop the cheating and abusive toxic behaviors that a narcissistic person might be exhibiting? Stay tuned, like and subscribe for more. So if you're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person, therapy may not stop the cheating and abusive toxic behaviors. And if you're new here, I'm a narcissist, actually a narcissistic personality disorder. I've said this before, but sometimes therapy can be used as an excuse to continue these behaviors right here. I'm in therapy. I just can't help cheating on you. If you love me, you'll stay with me and, and deal with it and help me and love me through everything. Or, or, or you can just leave me like everybody else has. You can abandon me like my mom did. And a lot of people in my comment section are trying to get that toxic person to therapy like it's a guarantee that they will get better. Therapy is absolutely not a guarantee that they will get better. There are some horrible, not only does therapy not work for some people, there are some horrible therapists out here, y'all. Not every therapist is qualified to deal with a toxic person. Therapy is not the end all be all for toxic people, y'all. It just isn't. And it doesn't work for every single person. It's worked for me over the last five years because I allow it to work. I allow it to help me change my behaviors and things like that. Otherwise, it just becomes an excuse, y'all. So welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Does therapy stop the toxic, abusive, narcissistic, cheating, all the other stuff? I'm gonna say no. Yeah, therapy is not a therapy is not guaranteed to work on any narcissist or toxic person. It's just not. It is absolutely, with no equivocation, a guarantee of change or behavior alterations or whatever you're looking for for that narcissistic person from that narcissistic person. If they were a cheater before therapy, chances are they're going to be a cheater after therapy. If they were a liar, an abuser before therapy, chances are they're going to be an a, li a liar and an abuser after or starting during therapy. It doesn't absolutely guarantee that that person is going to be better in any way, shape or form. It just it doesn't it doesn't work that way. Y'all I know people y'all look at my story and somehow I, mean, I, I get it. I'm not gonna say somehow I get it. Y'all look at my story and think they're like, oh, well, Lee went to therapy. He, he, he stopped all the stuff he was doing. No, I, no, the thoughts are still the same. My thought process is still absolutely 100% the same. I just had to get in between my behaviors, get in between my thoughts and things like that and change them up enough so that I can live a healthier life. So my kids get a chance to live in, live in a healthier life. My wife gets a chance to live in a healthier life. Our existences are better now because I've gone to therapy. I've committed to going to therapy for the rest of my life, for the rest of the, to empower my, not only myself, but to also empower my children, to also empower my children's children, also empower my wife as well. If my family members, my friends, my coworkers, the people who deal with me on a daily basis, you know what I mean? But therapy for somebody who's not willing, like if you had to force them to go to therapy, I'm just going to say it's probably a 90 something percent chance that this not going to work. If you had to force them into therapy, then narcissistic people don't like being told or forced to do anything that they don't want to actually do. So if you had to force them to go to therapy, chances are they're going to be angry as hell at you for forcing them to go to therapy. Chances are they're going to take that they're going to take that anger out on you. They're going to take that frustration out on you. So you have to be prepared for that, y'all. And this is again, this is not be trying to chastise anybody or try to try to put the blame on anybody, but this is this is kind of part of the process that you deal with when you're dealing with a narcissistic person. They're going to come at you. They're going to try to make it seem like those things are your fault. Like uh, you leave, if you give them an ultimatum to go to therapy or leave, chances are they'll either leave or they'll go to therapy just to say that they went, they went to therapy. Or I, I went to therapy. You can't say anything. I'm in therapy. You can't talk to me anyway. I did this. You can't say anything. You, you see what I'm saying? That's the dynamic. They think because they stepped a foot, they put a foot into the therapist chair that it means that they are okay now. They, they, they might promise you to go to therapy, but promising to go to therapy and actually, you know, working on your behaviors are two totally different things. Therapy is not a guarantee that the narcissist is going to stop cheating on you. Therapy is just a guarantee that they, they go in there. They might go in there and try to make it seem like you are the actual problem, that you are the issue and things like that, man. I mean, man, you, they really might make it seem that way, you know? So you have to deal with it. You have to battle it. You have to go forward with it and whatnot. You have to do it. It has to, it falls onto you. You know what I mean? It does. It falls into your lap. It falls into your behaviors. It falls into everything that you have going on. It actually, it falls onto you what you want to do. Control what you can control. You can't control that narcissistic person. If you don't like getting cheated on and they keep cheating on you, you might want to leave that person. If they put their hands on you, they say they won't do it again and they keep, keep continuously doing it, you might want to get away from that person because they're going to keep continuously doing it. You know what I mean? 
but you have to empower yourself because if you don't, I'm telling you, things do not get better. Things will not get better. Things are not going to get better for you in this relationship dynamic. It just, it just does not work that way, y'all. It really, really doesn't. So you have to absolutely empower yourself to keep moving forward because if you don't, yeah. Oh, I forced my, 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 my husband went to therapy and he actually got worse. My wife went to therapy and she actually got worse. The therapist actually, the therapist actually sided with my wife. The therapist, the therapist actually sided with my abuser. Marriage counseling, the therapist did this. The therapist did that. It is not, therapy is not a guarantee. If you have to struggle to get them there, if, you, if therapy is the last resort, I understand. So I understand y'all leave, wanted to leave no stone unturned. And y'all look at me and somehow y'all, y'all might look at me and think that your person is better than me just because, you know, oh, my, well, my, my ex is, my partner is better than Lee Hammond. So what, he's smarter than Lee Hammond. He looks better than Lee Hammond. So maybe my partner can do but better than Lee. Yeah, y'all don't compare and contrast them to me. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that they don't look better. They might not be better. I'm just saying you have to understand yourself and understand what's going on inside of your life. Because if you do not, I'm just saying you're going to lose to this narcissistic person. Y'all you just are. They can just go to therapy and just say, Hey, I, I'm going to therapy. You know, they can go to therapy and just say, Oh, I'm in therapy. This is what's going on. They can look at you and just say, Hey, I'm in therapy. Come back home. And if they promise to go to therapy before you come back, it does not guarantee that they're going to stay gone. I promise you, y'all. You have to empower yourself. You can't change that person. You cannot depend on that person to change. You Typically, if you're dealing with people like that, you have to accept them for who they are, what they are, where they are. Accept them for where they are. This is what I'm saying to you right now. You have to accept them for who they are, where they are, and what they are doing. You have to accept them for what they have going on. You have to accept them for their mindsets and their and their personalities. You have to accept them if they if they put this in your mind right here, y'all. If they do not change, if none of the behaviors change, are you willing to still accept this person? Some of y'all. So yeah, my son basketball. You wanna say hey? No. You wanna put your head in the camera and say hey? No. He's a shy guy. <laughs> yeah, I see my daughter will hop in the camera. Um, but some of them will just, like I said, some people will accept them for who they are because you love the person, you care about the person, and you get, you have to value yourself. Value yourself more, though, y'all. That's what I'm just telling you. I'm not telling you to leave your partner. I'm not telling you to leave your husband, leave your wife, n- not talk to your parents or deal with your parents. I'm telling you that sometimes you got to see what the dynamic is. Sometimes you have to see what's going on inside of their minds and whatnot. You really, really do. <clears throat> Because therapy is not a guarantee that they're going to work and change their behaviors, y'all. Therapy just means they go into therapy. Therapy just means that they go talk to the lady. <laughs> therapy or church. I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw this in here, too, at the end. Church does not change a narcissistic person. Either. I know some people in my comment section are like, well, you got to give it to God. God can change. Yo, God. Woo. Yo. Prayer is not enough. Faith without works is dead. Church will not change a narcissistic person Especially if they're not putting the work in and willing to look internally. You can give it to God all you want to. God going you gonna give it to God. God gonna get ca- God gonna catch him like what you wanna do with this? What you wanna do with this toxicity you got what, what you wanna do with this toxicity toxicity that you're exhibiting? What you wanna do with this this lying and cheating? What you wanna do with it? Oh, uh, I don't know, God. My wife told me to give it to you. The comment section on YouTube said give it to you, so I just gave it I gave it to you. I must do with it. Oh, you're not gonna put no work in? No, I just gave it to you. You have to put the work in. God ain't going to put the work in for you. He gave you free will, whether you want to do it or not. You got to put the work in. Therapy, same type of way. You have to put the work in. You have to go to therapy. Be willing to be vulnerable, open, and honest. If they're not willing to be open, honest, and vulnerable in therapy, then no, they're not going to change any of their behaviors, and you have to accept them for who they are right now. Who they are right now in this moment. What if they don't change? Are you willing to accept these behaviors, this person, if they do not change? When they do not change most times... Well, Lee, if you have a ballpark number on percentages, if uh, that a narcissistic person, that therapy works on, let's just say therapy works on, I'm a, look, this is a huge number and it's definitely not true, but let's just say therapy worked on 10% of narcissistic people. Let's just say therapy, and it doesn't, it's way less than that. I'm clearing me, I'm probably way less than that. I'm just saying 10% to just show you, to show you an example. Let's just say you have a hundred cups. Keys, hold on one second. Let me finish this last little, little bit, okay? You hear me? You can shoot in two minutes, okay? Let's just say you have a hundred cups on the table. If y'all hear this analogy before, you already know where I'm going. Let's say you had a hundred cups on the table. Each one of these cups had a clear liquid in it. Ninety of these cups are poisonous to the touch. Once you t- once that liquid touches your tongue, you're gone out of here. 
10, 10 of them are just clear water. You can just drink it and keep it moving. Would you take the chance at, at picking the cup with water in it? You only get one chance. You only get one chance. You only get one life. You only get one life. You get one chance. Here, drink this. Here's, here's your drink, drink this. Drink some of this. Um, you only get one chance. One shot. Seriously. Would you take the chance of picking the cup? You had 10 chances. You had, you had one chance. You got 10 cups. They all mixed in. They all look exactly alike. There's no bubbles. There's no fizzling. There's no nothing. It all looks exactly alike. Would you take that chance? No. What if it was 20? Nope. What if it was five? What if it was 1%? What if it had one of those cups on the table was poisonous? What, what, what was good? You wouldn't take that chance. Why are you taking that chance gambling whether or not this person is going to go to therapy to actually alter their behaviors? If you wouldn't pick one, if you wouldn't take the chance to pick one of those cups of poison or one of those cups of water, why would you take the chance with your life? Because that's exactly what you're doing. When you continuously stay in these toxic relationships, you're, you're, you're choosing the poisonous cup and you're drinking it. Therapy doesn't work without them putting the work in. Well, Lee, how do we know if they put the work in? You will know. I promise you, you will know. You will know. Your feelings will change. Your, your, your anxiety will change. Your anxiousness will change. Your body will change. The way you feel about this person will change if they're actually putting the work in. And even if they go to therapy, it might not be enough for you. Understand that even if they go to therapy, it might not be enough for you. It might be too late. When I went back to therapy after my wife had left the last time, I had to, I had to, I had to think about it like this. She, it might not be enough. It might be too late. And I was willing to deal with that. Why'd your wife come back? I was willing to accept the fact that if she didn't come back, my ass was still going to be in therapy the next day. I'll still be in therapy the next week. I will still be putting that work in. That's how it works though. That's how it goes. So anyways, y'all rant over. I'll be in Sydney, Australia, uh, the 14th of March in a few days. So if you're in the Sydney, Australia area, you want to hang out, shoot me an email at dearmentalhillness at gmail.com. I'll be around the Darling, Darling Harbor area, Sydney, Circular, Circular Quay. I'll be in Sydney, Sydney, Australia. I'll probably be at the Opera Bar in Sydney, Australia, the 14th of March, about 4 p.m. And maybe also the 16th. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Just email me, dearmentalhillness at gmail.com. I'll be in the Sydney, Australia area. Yeah, I don't have time to go anywhere else to Perth or Brisbane. I was looking it up. It was hit there so far. I don't have a car. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe for more. And as always, Mr. Hillness is out. Peace.